let's see what the players have brought for this final game so far. See if they you know, pinned on that perfection or they've gone for something very, very comfortable. We have Ben Markham coming up for our first one, of course, having a loads of top cut finishes, including a DC Open top, top 4, which is one of the biggest tournaments you can get a finish in. And he is bringing a very, very staple and stable team. Yeah, which he is known for in his play style. And it's got the Ogre Pond, the Golden Grove, Rillaboom, Urshifu, Tornadus, and Syrian Arcanine. Yeah, the, the kind of team that Ben is, is using is very kind of very familiar to a lot of players because that core of Tornadus, Urshifu, Arcanine, Rillaboom is something that we saw actually at Worlds last year. Actually, I should say Worlds this year, but last season. And it has picked up because it's such a... Like that Fire, Water, Glass core is so, so good both defensively and offensively and then we've got the oak pond the golden girl rounding out just making sure like golden girl is one of those pokemon that's kind of started at the start of regulation f maybe it wasn't as popular but players slowly realize actually no this is still a really really good pokemon and you know good great typing and fantastic ability and oak upon also that really great the wellspring mask a form of the water absorb really good against a lot of opposing Urshifus and this is the spiky, uh, the ball and me set so it is a bit more kind of defensive and a little bit more of a support for the team as well. And it's always good to have that bit of support going on to your roster, especially when you have making a change up from normality. We're having that dark type Urshifu here in Ben's team. It's throwing a bit of a twist into things. So you are playing that sort of like strategy where it's the, the Urshifu to strategy. But instead of relying on having Rain Dance to so then boost up your Urshifu, you then remove that remove that step and we see you've got Icu in there for extra speed control. And it means Arcanine as well can have a bit more free reign when it comes to doing damage because you don't have to worry, am I bringing my Arcanine in with the rain set up and you're forced into that Rock Slide Extreme Speed or Terror Blast. But let's see what is coming up against Ben Markham in Julian's side. And Julian, who said yesterday, he's still playing, he can fluctuate, he'll play teams that maybe him and his friends build, or maybe something that maybe a player who he's seen very well used. And he has brought the Dozo Tattoo Geary in that common 2 2 2 Dozo core, as the players call it, because it's sort of two, like, three mini teams in one. And it just allows you to kind of pick and choose which Pokemon does very well into your opponent to allow Don Dozo and Tattoo Geary to have its best efforts. Yes, indeed. That's a really cool kind of team where it's more like a, when you're facing up against this kind of team because Chi and Thunman can be a lead. Then Don Dota Tatsugiri is another pair, and then Champion Dragon. It's almost like a can pick or guess what your opponent is going to be leading with because a, a lot of these common the, the Pokemon just go so well together with each other. And we can also see Julian, also a very, very accomplished player, got top 16 World, uh, World Cup. But both last year and the year before, so he's no he's no stranger to the World Cup and how these formats are played, and just a veteran. And you see Players' Cup Top 8 in 2020 and the Special Events Top 8 in 2018. So a very, very accomplished player, and he knows how to play these things. And I think I haven't quite, uh, I think, Dondozo Tatsugiri is something that isn't, is slowly kind of dropping a little bit in usage, but still proving to be really powerful and a very strong combination for unprepared players. Yeah, it's, it's going to be nice to see how Julian can take Don to Tatsugiri and what could possibly be its last hurrah before we enter the DLC 2 format of that regulation set F in this January coming. But of course, what is now is the game. We'll have to see how the players take this. Julian leading with the ever so popular, ever so powerful Chempal Dragonite next to the Tornadus plus Arcanine coming in for Ben. So you have that combination of the super strong Choice Band Pokemon plus the support Pokemon coming out straight away. Yeah, Tornado's in a very good position just to get a Tailwind off immediately. Of course, it does have to watch out for an extreme speed from the Dragonite with Choice Band and Inner Focus, which is not affected by the Intimidate from the Arcanine, and Dragonite also being supported by Chimpow's sort of ruin ability. So I think, depending on, on how this Tornado is trained, it might or might not be able to survive an extreme speed. But I think, you know, Ben leading the Tornado's Arcanine probably indicating that he's we trained the tornadoes quite defensively and it is able to take an extreme speed from this Dragonite and set up a Tailwind to help out the team. Yeah, and by getting the Tailwind set up, you can just go down and put pressure onto the field. Of course, if you just have that Dragonite going for those Terra normal extreme speeds, that can be very, very dangerous going forward because you outspeed everything regardless of that Tailwind 
Uh, given how strong it is, it's doing a lot, a lot of damage to force of Transmization. Arcanine isn't really too bothered because it has got that rock typing in it naturally, so it takes those moves a bit better. But we know how powerful these Dragonites can be. If Rock Slide comes on through, it goes to both of them. Shepard gets the Dutton's Focus Sash, and Dragonite Transmission with more of a defensive terror. So we could see a ground type move going into that slot as Icicle Crash goes into the Toyers, no flinch, and puts it down to his own Focus Sash. <laughs> oh, actually, I actually forgot that the Tornado Sword is close to Sash Bearing, so what a uh, survival temper. Stomping Tantrum coming off times 4 effective on this Arcanine, he does not have a chance of surviving that attack. And Tornado Sword, Arcanine being knocked out means that there's no more Intimidate options for Ben, and he, his Tornado has been brought down to his, his Focus Sash, so there's one more attack, or uh, one more move that the Tornado can uh, stay on the field for, but I think Dragonite being locked into his Stomping Tantrum means that it cannot be. Um, extreme speed of this turn, and Urshifu is quite free to just get some attacks off with that Tailwind support that's been set up. Yeah, Tailwind being set up is just such free reign for this Urshifu, and it just has nothing that can really stop it. Chen Pao, can't, Chen Pao you know, unlike the type version, can't even play as much of the Sucker Punch chicken game of it because it, of its typing. As well, with that Tornadus was the just saw switch out because it had those two, uh, it has two attacking moves and two status moves. Normally, you carry about three or uh, two, you know, three or more status moves on your Tornadus, but of course, in that situation, you are kind of forced to switch out to play that chicken game and not get your sash broken. Chiyu comes on in for Julian though, just to bring a bit more special defensive presence into the prowess. This Sucker Punch does come out and does fail because of the switches that have it on this turn. Wicked Blow comes on through, goes into that champ power, gets that clean knockout. It's gone, so Dragonite hasn't got its full support, but can still come in with Choice Band Terra Normal Extreme Speed, which is very, very scary for both of these Pokemon. Oh yeah, indeed, it's going to be very scary, and the Dragonite with Inner Focus also means that it cannot be flinched, but the Fluttermane is actually going to come in instead. So, you know, maybe wanting to capitalize on the Bees of Ruin ability from its partner Chiyu, and also Fluttermane just not very scared of any fake outs because of its grass typing, so a you know, very nice switching for that Chiyu there, because had Ben gone for that close combat onto the Dragonite slot, which would have taken super effective, although I think, actually, Wicked Blow would have knocked out that, that stage, but had that close combat gone to Chiyu, it would have been knocked out, because I don't think that Chiyu, that Chiyu is not Focus Sash, so, it, yeah, because the Chi and had it, so, you know, the Chiyu could have been knocked out, but now, you know, in a very good position for the Fluttermane to just start, I mean, this very type attack, and see a Terra coming off. From what looks like the Oshi Proof, maybe trying to get an extra, you know, um, dark type moves to hit extra hard. Okay, no, that's what say. Extra hard can be very, very good in this situation, especially when you're wanting to outspeed this Flutter Mane and do loads of damage, and it does go Ooh. through, ignores that fairy type completely. And clears up that knockout there, and I think your shock of surprise there was something that a lot of people had there, Zoe. As we see the high <laughs> going through into the GU, and it gets oh, a clean wow. knockout as well. Oh, the <laughs> critical hit! That could have been the defining factor in at least a smidge of survival for Julian to go for a very powerful heat wave. But just does not get that, and Ben very, very lucky to get that hit there. It's just a Dragonite coming in now, which is a yeah. tough situation. Yeah, indeed, there's a lot of Pokemon to get through for this Dragonite, which only has single target attacks and it is heavily chipped. So, you know, a little, I think the Chi you probably would have survived that high horsepower without the critical hit, but he would have been, he would have lost to the Fluttermate anyway, because that, I think there's still one more turn of Tailwind left, so the Dragonite is going to get outsped unless it goes for the Extreme Heat, but I think at this point, without the Champau supporting it, Extreme C is not going to be knocking out either of this Pokemon at full health. No, it does not look like a knockout is imminent from this Dragonite, and if there was, there is still two Pokemon on the field you have to try and get rid of. So it is Julian going for that last Hail Mary, that saving race to try and get something done. It goes for the Urshifu, who even takes that hit, and it just goes for his own Wicked Blow, which should clean up the game now. So now we have that case that we had all throughout the stream. Ben Markham is one game away from taking that 7-0 for Team UK. He is probably licking his lips. He is ready for it. He is thinking, <laughs> if I win this, I've given the UK a very, very monumental win. Not only in getting them their first World Cup win, but I believe this is the first World Cup win that is a straight 7-0 victory, which just shows how powerful this team is coming all the way through the tournament. Of course, Julian is the blockade in that to make it still a big victory but not the biggest it can possibly be. 
Yeah, that was actually also quite some good information for Quillian as well. That Dragonite with the Terra Normal voice ban did quite a bit of health against that Urshifu. So, you know, a bit of good, good information to kind of gather for maybe Game 2 as an adjustment, wanting to try, try and bring it back. So, maybe possibly get it to a Game 3 as well. And I really want to see what kind of adjustments Quillian is going to make to try and prevent Team UK from getting that coveted 7 0 sweep on this World Cup. It is gonna be it is gonna be a sight to see if we can. No, other way it's a sight to see. It's a sight to see if Ben gets that seven zero sweep for the UK. It's also gonna be a sight to see if Julian brings some sort of special rendition of the playstyle to make sure there is that loss in the turn of the UK. Of course, we've done Dozo Tatsugiri in this two 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 variant. There's only so much that you can do before you you kind of exhaust all your resources. You can you can go for the Chiyu Flutter main lead. You can go for the Don, you can go Dozo Tatsugiri. You can bring it in the back. Maybe we could see a change and see Dozo Giri come. That could be something that makes it so there's a bit more defensive presence. And holding that Rocky Helmet, it puts a lot of pressure on these super strong physical Pokemon coming out from Ben's side. But at the same time, you can just bring something like that Golden Go to set up some nasty plots and just get run through that way and just allow for Tailwind plus some sort of other speed boost to be the pressure they put down. Because on Dozo, with plus two, it's still slower than a fair few Pokemon, even with those boosts. Yeah, especially when there's Tailwind on the field as well. And I think the fact that it's a Dark type Urshifu, it doesn't help the Dondozer because it can't really tank any critical. The critical hits from a Wicked Blow is not going to be able to be resisted. And I think that Dondozer we saw in preview was a Terra Water type, so it couldn't really terrestrialize out of it as well. And it also means that the Rillaboom is very free to just click Grassy Glide onto the Dondozer. And even at plus two defense, it's still going to be taking a lot from, you know, a grassy terrain boost with grassy glide. Yeah, it's going to be taking a lot of damage from all those attacks, but of course, it is up to players to input what they feel is the best for this game too. As we see Dragonite plus Buttermane, so the two Pokemon that normally are the offensive ones in their duo are coming out to play. So this could just be, again, another Hail Mail throwing all caution into the wind and just saying, here's damage, you know, try and stop it if you can. You see Protosim just gets the speed boost on the Fluttermane, which is going to be very, very useful unless that Tornadus doesn't fall for any bluffs and just go straight for that Tailwind or an Icy Wind to make sure that Dragonite has a bit more speed behind it, allowing it to go faster both his Pokemon. And with that Choice Band, it's liking both the Pokemon in front of it because you can Trastalize away, but it's still going to be very, very strong. Yes, indeed, and that uh, Tornadus, I think, even once it sets up Tailwind, the Arknight is going to out be the bottom main even with that booster energy so it's quite safe to just go for that tailwind and we do see uh then locking into that option and you know nothing really stopping the arcanine from going for a box side which is going to do a lot of damage to the bottom main which is a little bit squishy on its defensive side but bottom main recognizing that maybe it might be in danger of getting knocked out or taking him down it's going to protect and see that Dragonite once again does not go for the extreme speed but that means going to be taking a super effective rock slide and I'm curious to see whether it will even survive it took a lot of damage neutral luck but oh it is going to survive and get a stop in the tank of which is going to be enough to knock out the dark line. it's nice to see that Dragonite surviving so it gives a little bit of hope there to Julian who can then use that to put more pressure down. Unfortunately, given the Pokemon that you have in front of you being that Tornadus and the Pokemon that can come in from the back being out of that Rillaboom that Urshifu, you are now forced to switch it out to make sure that you're hitting a decent amount of damage. Urshifu you know, will be a little bit pressured by this Flutter main because it is four times weak, but of course Urshifu all has to do is just ter go Terra Dark and go for a super strong Dark type move, and we know Flutter main isn't capable of taking that in any circumstance ever. So now it just feels like Julian has to call the switches right, has to call the, call the protect right, call everything right, put themselves in a very, very good situation to try and control that field, but Ben is in that typical Tornado plus Urshu situation where it kind of just runs itself now, and you can go for any combination of moves, and I'm pretty safe to say an Icy Wind maybe knocks out a Dragonite from here, given that four times effectiveness. Oh yes, I think you may be right, unless Julian chooses to go for a tower. Bottom is actually trying to withdraw, so Julian recognizing that he wanted to keep his bottom main just stay for another turn, but without saying that Dragonite is going to stay in, and if it doesn't switch out, oh, actually no, it's a double switch out on that Dragonite as well, so I think you're a stomping tantrum, probably not the best move to lock into against these two teams, but Tiyu and Champau locked in the back, so you know both these Pokemon are going to be resisting any Dark-type types, 
coming off from this first ship route, unless Ben calls this and goes for a fighting type move onto either of these Pokemon. Yeah, if Ben calls out and goes a fine time attack, that is probably one of the best plays you can make in this situation. <laughs> of course, by having uh, Chen Pao come in, you do run that risk if you are making yourself even weaker to these Pokemon. But of course, with that Bleak Wind Storm doing loads of damage, you face that same oh, risk wow. with the Chi Yu, who gets that boost on the special defense to move. And then we see the speed drop as well, and Urchifu cleans up the Chen Pao, which means that there is now one less Pokemon to deal with. And that's something that Dragonite has to come in. You're going to be very happy, especially again with the special defense drop that's happening from the from the chi yu plus it's a sheer damage presence coming out from this uh shifu of course if Fluttermain comes in and can survive a turn at least then it comes through and does loads and loads of damage yeah Fluttermain is going to come back so it is going to do a lot of damage with the help of its partner chi yu but we saw just you know that tornadoes did so much with the bleak wind storm it just indicating that the focus slash tornadoes probably trained to be quite offensive as well and also with the Chi Yu on the field the Beads of Ruin was active so that was why what allowed the Tornadoes to be doing more than 50% to that Chen Pao and allowed the Urshifu to finish it off with a not very effective Wicked Blow but it was still effective enough to knock it out but now it looks like you know Urshifu it's got the Tailwind support it's against a Flood Main and it don't so actually the Huey hasn't gone for a Terra just yet so the Flood Main could go for the Terra Fairy to keep itself safe, but it looks like the Chi Yu is going to withdraw, so Dragonite is going to be coming out, and does mean that it gets to go for extreme speed if it chooses to quit, but we see that Terra coming off, looking like it's going to be the Flood Man just trying to survive a Dark type move from this version here. Yeah, it looks to survive the turns it can, but of course we know how powerful Urshifu can be, even with that fairy typing, it still can then that. Main because it does go for protecting yourself safe in front of you, an inevitable move that could be coming out from that slot. Bleak with Storm goes through, gets a knockout on to Dragonite and puts Main into a risky situation. There is no speed drop, which is very, very good, but it still does mean there's going to put some pressure down. Dazzling Leam is the option though, so going bypassing that protect and then allowing for some knockout damage to be put down. If it is causing knockout on Tornadus, it doesn't even get that done. Meaning that there is now pretty much a fresh lead here for Ben currently. Yeah, I think Julia might have been banking on maybe a Bleak Wind Storm miss on that Dragonite, so that Tornadoes might have been picked off by a Choice Bandit Extreme Speed. But now, I think there's one more turn of Tailwind left, I believe, or I, I didn't quite catch the animation, but you know, this Tornadoes is doing a lot of damage and just bringing that. It's not just a support Pokemon, it can be doing a lot, but it's good to go for the protect just to keep itself safe with the ones and a close combat coming off against the Chiyu, easy enough to pick, pick it off and the Fluttermane is left, uh, is free to get an attack off, but I think the the Urshifu is, oh no, this is a Black Glasses Urshifu, so you will get knocked out if the fairy type move lands onto it. Yeah, that's, that's one that give or take you have with trying to get rid of Ivory's Pokemon with the close combat. You have to risk taking more and more damage, even that Trascalage gone. But I think even without that close combat drop, the Fluttermane would have been putting loads and loads of pressure down onto this Urshifu, who is known to be the bulkiest in its special defensive stat. And Tailwind does end, but with Tornadoes being really, really healthy still, it doesn't really mind that because it can just sit up against straight away. Rillaboom, being a physical attacker, can put loads of pressure down onto this Fluttermane, especially with the grassy terrain coming out to play. You can even fake it out if you want to have that little bit of late game cheese because it has lost its ghost typing, but Ben probably knows what route to go with, how to play this safely, and it's going to go for everything possible to clean it up. We see protecting off the flutter main just to prolong it a little bit longer. Yeah, I mean, at this stage, I th there's not really no need to go for a Tailwind because the Rillaboom can go for that priority Grassy Glide, but I think also it does carry Wood Hammer. So, I think in the next turn, Tornado is going for that Icy Wind, that one to just to maybe get some chip off. But next turn, the, the Tornadoes can just go for the Tailwind, and then the Wood Hammer can come off onto the Swan Main, which is not going to be able to survive a really strong base 120 physical attack. And that's exactly what we see coming off from Ben, that Tailwind coming off and I think, you know, William's playing it out at the stage, recognizing that he's probably not going to get the win, but wanting to just play it out all the way to the end, and Fluttermane is going to get hammered in the head with that big wooden hammer, and it's going to get knocked out. Well, of course, Rillaboom hammering in the last nail in the coffin for Argentina there, 
with UK taking a 7-0 sweep thanks to Ben Markham's 2-0 win over Julian and has just set history a precedent a benchmark and everything you can name for it in the World Cup because you know when's this gonna happen again is someone gonna get that 7-0 victory next year we'll never know because it is a year away but right now we are looking at UK's amazing victory